How do we deploy a Spring Boot application to a production environment? For example, deploy to a cloud provider like Amazon AWS or Microsoft Azure, or deploy to an on-premises Unix server. Don't tell me you want to install your favorite IDE like IntelliJ on a production server so that you can run the program by clicking this play button. It turns out that once the development is done, we need to build and package the application into an artifact and deploy that artifact to the production server. Recall that when we created our project using Spring Initializer, there is an option called Packaging. By default, it is JAR. JAR, or Java Archive, is the most popular packaging type in Spring Boot. So, in this video, I will show you how to package our Spring Boot application into a self-contained executable JAR file, and then show you how to run this JAR file from the command line. In the end, let's open this jar file to look at its file structure so that we can understand how Spring Boot packages our application. I will show you two ways to package the application. First, let's delete the target directory to have a clean start. Then open the terminal. and use this command, dot forward slash maven w package dash d skip tests. Here, we're using the maven wrapper, maven w, to package our project. The option dash d skip tests Make sure that Maven does not run the tests to save some time. Press Enter. As you can see, the target directory appears again. And you can find the generated jar file under the target directory. The second way is easier. So again, let's delete the target to have a clean start. This time, we can use the Maven panel in IntelliJ. Just double click the package option, but this time we're not using the dash d skip tests option, so this packaging process will take longer. As you can see, Maven is running all the tests. OK, I fast forwarded a little bit so you don't have to watch Maven building and compiling. As you can see, build is success. The target directory is back. and the jar file is created. OK, next. I want to show you something in palm.xml. We scroll all the way down. The Spring Boot Maven plugin provides Spring Boot support in Apache Maven. It is this plugin that allows us to package executable jars and run Spring Boot applications. So this is the hero behind the scenes. Next, how to run this executable jar file 
we can use this command. So terminal, clear, java dash jar, target directory, Hogwarts artifacts online 0.0.1 .0 snapshot.jar. So we can use this java dash jar command to launch the application. As you can see, Spring Boot application is started. Let's toggle over to the browser. All right, let's test one API endpoint. Localhost 8080 API v1 slash artifacts. Now remember, this one does not require authentication, so it's public. So press Enter. Good. As you can see, the Spring Boot application is up and running. Behind the scenes, the Spring Boot Maven plugin packages the application and its dependencies inside this executable jar. You will also hear people call it a fat jar or an Uber jar. By the way, an embedded Tomcat server is also included in this jar so you don't need to install it separately in the production environment. That means this jar is completely self-contained. You can distribute this jar and not worry about whether or not dependencies are installed at the destination, as this jar actually has no dependencies. What a great idea. At this moment, you can choose to deploy this jar to a remote production server using a Unix file transfer tool, for example, SCP, or SFTP, and then run the jar file using the java jar command that I just showed you. But of course, that remote server must have the correct java runtime installed first. In the end, I would like to show you the file structure inside this jar file. You don't need to know the details to work with the jar file, but I want to show you how Spring Boot packages our application. So let's go ahead and extract the contents of this jar file. So let me copy the jar file, copy, and paste it into a folder I created on the desktop. The name of this folder is extracted. Then let's open the terminal. The command used to extract a jar file is jar xf. The x option indicates that you want to extract files from the jar file. OK. As you can see, three directories are extracted from this jar file, boot-info, meta-info, and org. So here is the file structure inside a jar file. Org, Spring Framework, boot, loader, contains the necessary loader classes to set up and start the application. They are from Spring Boot. So let me collapse it. Let's look at the boot-info directory first. So there is a directory called classes. It looks like it contains all the application classes that we wrote. So for example, artifact, Hogwarts user, security, system, wizard. As you can see, application classes written by us are placed under the boot-info slash classes directory. What about lib? It turns out that dependencies are placed under the boot-info slash lib directory. OK, so let me collapse both. Under boot-info, there are two more files, classpath.index and layers.index. So what are they? 
the classpath.index file. provides the ordering that jars should be added to the class path. As you can see, those jars are from boot-info slash lib. The layers.index file is used for Docker image creation, which you will learn in the next video. When we create a Docker image for a Spring Boot application, this executable jar will be split into layers defined in this file. This file defines several layers and their order. Dependencies, Spring Boot loader, snapshot dependencies, and application. This file also defines the parts of the jar that should be contained within those layers. Right now, just think of a layer as a directory or folder that contains some classes and jars. For example, regular released dependencies will be contained under the dependencies layer. Everything under org Spring Framework Boot Loader will be contained under the Spring Boot Loader layer. Snapshot dependencies will be contained under the snapshot dependencies layer. In our project, there are no snapshot dependencies. Application classes written by us and the resources will be contained under the application layer. You probably wonder, what is the point of splitting the jar into these four layers when creating a Docker image? It turns out that when creating a Docker image, we need to add the contents of the executable jar to the image. But what is the order of adding? This layers.index file defines the order that the layers should be added to the Docker image. For example, all the classes and the jars in the dependencies layer should be added to the image before all the Spring Boot loaders in the Spring Boot loader layer, and so on. Spring Boot separates the classes and jars of the executable jar into different layers based on how likely they are to change between application builds. Content that is least likely to change should be added first to the Docker image, followed by layers that are more likely to change. The default order is dependencies, Spring Boot loader, snapshot dependencies, and application, as you can see here in this file. At this moment, just remember, this layering approach will make Docker image creation more efficient. It is considered a best practice. OK. Last but not least, under meta-info, you can find this manifest.mf. It contains information about the files packaged in a jar file. I want to highlight two attributes. First, the main-class attribute specifies the application's entry point. In this case, it is the org.springframework.boot.loader.jar launcher class. This is the executable jar's main entry point, and it is used to set up an appropriate URL class loader and ultimately call the main method defined in the start-class attribute, which in this case is Hogwarts Artifacts Online application. If you recall that, there is a main method there. So Hogwarts Artifacts Online application is the actual class that we want to launch. That is the class that contains a main method in our application. All right, hopefully you have a better understanding of the executable jar file and its structure. In the next video, let's further package this jar file into a Docker container. See you there.